welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm making a very exciting video which is a book video. I've been wanting to make a book video for a long time and today I'm going to be talking about fiction books that I would recommend reading. And here's my pile of books. It's always hard to select which ones to talk about because I read a lot. I'm a writer and a writing student so I've got a lot of books to choose from. Some of these books are my absolute all-time favourites. Some are books that I've read recently that I found interesting. It's kind of chilly today, so it's like the perfect grey, cloudy day to be inside reading. Let's start with one. I'm sure a lot of you have read this already, or heard about this, or started watching it on TV. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I was really curious about how it's all written in um, interview form, which I found very interesting. I really like reading magazines and I love reading interviews just in general so I did really enjoy that about this book. You don't see the questions, you just see the, the different characters and their responses to whatever the question was that we don't know. What's particularly interesting about this is that as in real life the way that one person sees reality isn't the same from how somebody else perceives it. So I think that was a really interesting idea to explore in this. And Taylor Jenkins Reid in her newer novels often explores themes of fame. This book was about a famous um, band in the 70s. It was quite heavy with um, themes of addiction in particular. It's a book that I feel you can read quite quickly and it's something you might like want to take on holiday with you. This book has been very popular for a while and now it's even more so because of the series that just came out on Bang Video. So I've started that recently, I think I'm on episode 5. They've chosen to change some areas. My favourite character in the book is Camilla, or Camilla, um, and the way that they include her character more in the season so far is something that I really, really appreciate. So definitely I would say read the book first, then watch the series. We'll move on to the next book, but first, I really need a cup of tea, so let's go get that. Okay, got my tea, and now we're ready for the next book. Little Women. I think this is my first ever favourite novel, it's the book that made me love reading. Um, when I was 10 I read this and since then I've read it many times again. I got this copy when the Greta Gerwig film came out and I absolutely adore that film as well. I love this book, it's such a classic and it will always be in my top 5 books ever. I love how it's about four sisters and it's about their family life and their life at home with their mum and I love how it's about creativity and how one sister wants to be an actress, another wants to be a writer, another wants to be an artist, and another wants to be a musician. And I think um, the way that Louisa May Alcott explores their individual identities um, and their relationships to each other is just so beautiful. So yeah, this is a book I return to very often and I find that I just love reading it around Christmas time or the holidays. It's got such a warm and heartfelt feeling to it. And I'm always looking for books that give me that feeling and it's actually very rare to find it. All time pain. So this is a book I've read more recently, I would say. I think I found it in 2020 or 2021 um, in, during the pandemic when we weren't in lockdown and I got to go to the bookstore. It's called Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tsujimura. Ever since I've read this book, I've never stopped thinking about it. It really remains in my mind and it was so beautiful, poetic, and very moving and memorable. It's a Japanese novel and it won the Booksellers Award in Japan and uh, was a number one bestseller. It's about seven teenagers in Tokyo. It centers around a girl called Kokoro who stops going to school and she is at home and suddenly her mirror starts shining. She's able to travel into the mirror, into this castle. In the castle, she meets six other teenagers. This novel was unbelievable in the way that Tsujimura was able to make me feel connected to each of these seven teenagers. Each of these seven characters were very, very interesting, moving and poignant which I don't think happens all too often in novels. Um, usually the protagonist is central to everything and the revolving characters, especially if there's six of them, not all of them have as much depth of development. So in this book, 
it's incredible how these how these seven characters are developed in such complex ways exploring different areas of mental health in the back of the book it talks about how this was an instant number one bestseller in japan she also won the naoki prize for her works there's a publisher's note at the end saying the popularity of lonely castle in the mirror in japan where it scooped two prizes and became a bestseller's testament to its power to heal and to open debate the way that sujimura explores mental health in this from the very beginning with Kokoro and her struggles with school is very profound and very poignant and really connects as, a, as I was reading. I found that it felt so truthful. If you read the back, it says, in a tranquil neighborhood of Tokyo, seven teenagers wake to find their bedroom mirrors are shining. At a single touch, they are pulled from their lonely lives to a wondrous castle filled with winding stairways, watchful portraits and twinkling chandeliers. In this new sanctuary, they are confronted with a set of clues leading to a hidden room where one of them will be granted a wish, but there's a catch. If they don't leave by five o'clock, they will all be punished. As time passes, they begin to realize only those brave enough to share their stories will be saved. It may seem like a fantasy because of the castle, but however, it doesn't feel, it feels so real. And if you read to the end, the way um, everything used together is extremely, is very profound very very moving i very rarely cry in books or films or anything but this one definitely made me cry and it really does stay with you we're here on the beanbag now with chi chi this book is three summons by margarita liberaki i read it earlier this year i think i'd never heard of this before and i really love reading books that are from different time periods this was published for the first time in 1946 when I saw this, I was really intrigued to buy it because it's a coming of age novel about three sisters in Greece. I love reading diverse novels from around the world, written in different languages and translated. For me, novels about sisters, novels that are about coming of age, they all really interest me and fascinate me. And so I loved this. It was, there was such a focus on nature as well and on flowers and on the seasons. And it was so, um, authentically tied into the book which I felt really brought everything to life for me. I'm part Greek as well and I've spent some time in Greece. It's set near Athens which is um, similar to where my grandmother comes from. It really brings setting and nature and everything to life when you read it. It says over three summers the girls share and keep secrets, fall in and out of love, try to understand the strange ways of adults and decide what kind of women they hope to become. There are some really interesting feminist themes explored here and how the three sisters kind of question these different um, notions of what was expected of women during that time in their village. Having the novel span three summers was really interesting. I like when novels take more time to unfold um, and I think this was done really beautifully and I highly recommend. This book is one that I have a lot of thoughts about. Kara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. It immediately drew me in and I was immediately very curious about the world that Ishiguro creates and he is very creative um, in his writing so I didn't really know what to expect and I enjoyed that. So basically Clara is an artificial friend and in this world um, most children have an artificial friend which is like an AI robot. When this begins Clara the artificial friend is still in the store and is waiting to be chosen by a child and so then she ends up being chosen and she goes to this home with the child and the, the story plays out with her and the girl and the girl's mother. It just brought up a lot of questions and a lot of thinking around artificial intelligence and humans and how as technology gets more and more advanced, there are certain things that can never be replicated in AI. This book came out in 2021 and I read it as soon as it came out if I was to read this again now, I think it would maybe be even more disturbing. And Kazuo Ishiguro really, in the middle of this very specific story, pulls out huge questions really. So I think if I read this now, I'd have even more questions and more to think about. There's elements in here that you just don't expect. There's elements that are very disturbing. And yet the writing is just magnificent. Plus, I absolutely love this cover. He won a Nobel Prize in Literature and the Booker Prize 
and he has earned a lot of other honours as well. He was born in Japan but moved to England at the age of five and he received knighthood as well for his services to literature. I like reading his work because it really does stir your mind and bring up a lot of questions and a lot to discuss so I would be really curious if any of you have read this, what you thought about this, um, let me know in the comments. I hope you're enjoying this um, book talk. I could talk about books forever. When I catch up with my friends, we're often talking about novels and about books that we're reading and it's like one of my favourite things ever to talk about. I've really enjoyed filming this video. If you'd be interested in seeing more of these book videos, please leave me a comment below and also let me know if there's any particular kind of video you'd be interested in. I could make a video all about classic books that I love or about contemporary fiction. I think I'll do some non-fiction as well. Subscribe if you want to see more. This is a book I read quite recently, If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. It's a very contemporary novel. The author used to be a journalist and so she studied her subject matter in such depth. She wrote in such a complex way about these characters. A very intricate um, piece of fiction and it's not super long but it really covers a lot. This book follows four young women in Seoul. So we read from four characters' point of view and it flips between them in this book. And it's not so long so I'm like very impressed and amazed by how Cha was able to create such complex portraits of each of these women while not even writing in one perspective for the whole novel. And each of them have very distinct lives, live a very different um, reality, but they're all living in the same building. Their stories cross over and mix together. Whenever you read a book with multiple characters, there's always one that kind of stands out to you more. So for me, Miho was um, particularly interesting. She's an artist and this book feels quite stark. It really brings you into the world in such a real way. In some ways, very depressing in some areas. Some areas are very disturbing. It's a very, very intricate and distinct portrait of four women. And um, Frances Cha writes excellently in this novel. So Frances Cha, she's a formal travel, former travel and culture editor for CNN Seoul. And then she has lived in the States, Hong Kong and South Korea. This book looks at beauty standards and dives really into depth of the harmful sides of beauty standards in society. She studied so much in order to write in real detail about all of these things that the women in this book go through. And I finished reading this and I can't forget it. It very much stays in my mind. This one and Kazuo Shiguro, they disturb you in a way that shakes your mind to ask questions and be thought provoking. This is time for my favorite novel. One of my other top five novels of all time, Emma by Jane Austen. One of my nicknames is Emma, so I've always found a very particular connection to this book, not just because of that. I, first of all, have been a Jane Austen fan for many, many years. I think I read, since I was a teenager, I just fell in love with her writing. I'm just very, very um, inspired by Jane Austen in general. I went to her house in England and it was a very special experience. I saw her room that she used to work in and write in and her little desk that she would write her novels at. It's fascinating to see where she wrote from and how she was able to write so many epic novels um, from her home. I love how her novels really centre around female protagonists and home life and these very intricate relationships. It's a comedy and Jane Austen's writing is so witty and hilarious and I think this is, for me, this is just the most enjoyable novel. The character of Emma is so memorable, so specific, and just so alive. If you like Clueless, it's actually based off of this novel. So Emma is known for being a matchmaker and she likes to set people up. This is a love story, it's a comedy, very enjoyable novel and one that I've read multiple times because I just love it so much. One that I will continue to read over and over and over again. And one that I recommend to all my friends who have not read a Jane Austen novel to start with this one. The character of Emma is just one of my favourite fictional characters. Even though some people think she's an unlikable protagonist, for me she's complicated. She goes through an interesting arc in this book. Again, another coming of age novel about a female protagonist. And my sister and mum bought me, bought me this copy for my birthday a couple years ago and I just think it's absolutely stunning and beautiful. If you've read and enjoyed any of those books that I have talked about, please let me know in the comments. I'd be really curious to hear 
um, what you all think about these books and also if you have any recommendations please let me know because I'm always looking for new books to read. I'm currently reading Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I love, as well as fiction, I love reading non-fiction and his writing is amazing. Thank you very very much for watching. I so enjoyed making this video so I definitely will be making more book videos in the future. Also let me know if you've seen Daisy Jones and Six and what you think of it so far. I'll see you again soon. I'm going to be making a lot more regular videos now that I've finished studying so please look forward to that and if you enjoyed this subscribe because I'll be making more soon.